So the other day I wake up and what do I see? Hashtag bare shelves Biden is trending. And a bunch of people are posting photos of grocery stores not too far from where I live with empty store shelves. Now, some people said this is an exaggeration. We heard the excuse in the mainstream corporate press that it's not a supply chain issue. That's all wrong. It's just a high demand issue. And I started thinking, I I don't understand why demand for food just spiked all of a sudden right now. Is it just that it snowed? So everybody said, I'm going to eat at home and not go out to eat. Well, I don't know if that's true, because even though it snowed out where we live, people were still at restaurants. So I kind of don't believe their narrative on massive demand. Yeah, if there's a huge demand and people go out and they're buying everything like celery, Brussels sprouts, strawberries, potatoes, corn, just like literally all of it to the point where the shelves are stripped clean. It doesn't seem like a high demand issue because they uh, th- these grocery stores, they get produce and meats shipped in very regularly. So it would be to it, 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 they would be implying that everyone went out at the exact same time, that it wasn't just sustained demand over a, over a longer period, like a week or two weeks, that it was the demand instantly in one day. Well, as the Daily Mail says, it's like a Soviet store during 1981. Grocery stores across the U.S. have empty shelves as supply chain crisis and COVID combined to make basics like milk, bread, meat, canned soups, and cleaning products hard to find. Wow. We've been through this before. Uh, We went through this, well, we've been going through this consistently for the past couple of years. So I'll just stress this point, my friends. This is not even the biggest story. This is just a story from the other day about Joe Biden and his bare shelves. But take a look at this. Consumer prices rose by 7% in December over previous year, marking third straight month of high inflation. You're going to love the subhead. Lawmakers and officials are starting to question whether some companies are keeping prices unnecessarily high. I I, I don't even I don't even know what to say at this point. The excuses, the excuses after excuse after excuse. Oh, the real reason inflation is hitting is because meat producers just want to make a whole bunch of money. That's amazing. We heard that inflation was transitory. They said, oh, no, 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 it's just because all of a sudden there's big demand, but it'll go back down, which makes literally no sense. That never made sense. They're lying to you. And I'll give you one really simple explanation as to why. When the cost of beef goes up, the guy who works as a butcher needs to make more money to buy the beef. Okay. So now beef becomes more expensive. They have to pay their staff more money. The guy who makes 15 bucks an hour is now making 1750. Are, are the prices going to go down because that man says, hey, I don't need seventeen fifty anymore. You can reduce my wages back to 15 No, that's never going to happen. So employment costs, uh, wage costs are going to remain up. And because of that, the cost of beef and everything else is going to remain up as well. And then it becomes, if we don't get a handle on it, it starts to run away. Because what will happen is you got a guy who makes 15 bucks an hour or a, a person who makes 15 bucks an hour. And all of a sudden, the cost of goods, cereal, milk, bread, eggs, whatever, is going up. So this person says, I need to raise. And they say, okay, fine. But that means we got to raise the cost of, you know, our, our insurance policies to cover the cost of, you know, paying our staff who run, this, who run these uh, systems. Now, the guy who works at the butcher shop says, my insurance premiums are going up. And so I need a raise to cover it. Then the cost of beef goes up because they need to compensate their, their, their staff members. And then the insurance guy goes, hey, the beef got more expensive again. I, I can't do this job. And maybe that's why we're seeing so many people resign. We're seeing so many people leave the labor force because it's just becoming runaway. Now, here's what, I, here's what I'll say to this. First, let me show you these photos of the supply chain. This is crazy. This is Washington, D.C. No tomatoes. Wow. That one freaks me out. Potatoes and onions. What do we got here? Come on. Wow. Then you got, this is a Trader Joe's, no bread. Wow. Uh, here we have a Walmart in Anchorage, Alaska. Now, I don't know if it's fair to highlight Alaska. They already have a difficult issue with supply chain. Uh, they, they already have supply chain issues being that everything, everything's got to be shipped in, but there's no chicken. There's nothing on the shelves. What do we got here? We got empty medicine shelves in Long Island, New York. Okay, that's freaky. That's freaky because our vitamin C and our antibiotics and other medicines are made in China. So right now, I've just shown you all of these empty shells. I don't know what's going to happen. 
I don't really have any profound advice as to what you should do with your life or what you should be investing your money. I can't tell you that. What I can tell you, and I don't do this all that often, but I think it's it's, it's important to, to, to do now whenever we have stories like this. This is a sponsored pot, a sponsored a sponsor spot for safeandreadymeals.com. Safe and Ready Meals, you get a four-week emergency food supply for a couple hundred bucks. These are buckets that last up to 25 years. They have up to 25-year shelf life. I'll make sure I'm very specific. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, two rugged buckets weighing 38 pounds, free shipping and handling. The reason I'm shouting this out, and I only ever do this when we get big stories like this, because I think it's genuinely important. I have a photo on my Instagram. We have a bunch of these things. Because sometimes it snows, I'll put it that way. When, when it snowed, we had a lot of people who couldn't get out here. We've got rural roads. And so I'm just like, you know, we've got emergency first aid kit. I'm going to have some emergency food kits because you never know when you need to crack one open. And to be honest, we have. We've absolutely cracked them open. Not because the apocalypse happened or anything like that, but because we were like, hey, we're running low on certain foods. We don't want to go out in the storm. They just pop open one of these things. They last forever. The food's great. You mix it in. It's, it's, it's simple stuff. It's like you, you'll, you open it and it's, it's dried and powdered. So like the macaroni and cheese is like regular macaroni and cheese. You get in the box and you pour it in a pot and heat it up. I don't know if uh, uh, you need whatever, you know, uh, safeandreadymeals.com has to offer. What I can say is I think it's very, very smart to have. We have first aid kits. We don't tip. A lot of people don't even know where their first aid kit is. How often do you really use it? But the reason I like to bring this up is, for one, when you buy this stuff, it does support our work, this show. We don't read these. I, I don't shout them out all that often. Maybe we should. But I do have my concerns that things are kind of falling apart. Whenever I get that feeling that the supply chains are breaking, that things are falling apart, I like to shout them out because you never know, man. I want you guys to be safe. I I'm, I'm going to lay it out completely, 100%, on the table, honestly. I think you guys should be prepared for the worst. I don't think you need to fill a bunker with beans thinking the, a nuclear bomb's going to drop or anything like a, a, a caricature of a prep or anything like that. But I think it would be wise if you had food, water, and depending on where you live, you know, guns and ammunition, things to keep you and your family safe. And so I just want to, I want to shout them out. Secondly, it's a sponsored spot. It helps support all of the work we do. So it's a great opportunity to, to offer you guys up something that I think is really important. You put it in your closet, you forget about it. Then, I, then you can rest assured knowing if a flood hits, if a storm hits, if the roads get shut down. I mean, you could have, you know, you, you have in Texas that flood and you got to be wondering if you're going to be able to get to the grocery store because of supply chain disruptions and because the roads are shut down, emergency crews. You never know, man. You never know. I think it's crazy that you actually have people, uh, city type people, I guess. I don't want to necessarily say left or Democrats, but it does tend to be them mocking the idea of having some kind of emergency preparedness, it's crazy, right? Do you guys have a bug out bag? Like a bag with, with a change of clothes, maybe with like a raincoat, maybe with like a Leatherman, you know, a tool or a flashlight. It's crazy to me that people mock the idea of being ready for a disaster. Because I will tell you this, there, there are people, people in cities are so complacent. And this is part of the reason why we end up seeing these things, like empty store shelves and lies. What do they end up saying? Inflation is transitory. People believed that. People absolutely believed that inflation was transitory. Yo, man, you've got to be responsible for yourself. And let me put it this way. Let's say you have a bug out bag and some, some you know, urban liberal type is making fun of you being like, why do you have these tools supplies? And then one day a fire in your building. Hey, just like in New York. And what do you do? Do you have your supplies like next to your bed? You can grab your bag, run outside, and you know you're going to have a, cha a, a, a change of clothes. You're going to have, you know, toothbrush, toothpaste. You're going to have maybe a lighter, maybe some food, maybe some protein bars because you don't know what's going to go on, where you're going to be staying. It's crazy to me that people would not have any level of precaution for this stuff. And now we can see what's happening. So again, I'm going to stress this point too. I... I I don't think this is the apocalypse just because you can't get tomatoes right now. I don't know what's going to happen. We've seen food shortages over the past couple of years, and they've waxed and waned. Some days they get really, really bad, and people go to the stores and they're shocked. And then the next day you show up and everything's kind of back to normal. In my local grocery store, they are running low a little bit, but I didn't see anything like this. So I, I want to I absolutely stress that point as we're looking at all of this, this, this stuff with inflation. I, I, well, first thing I'll say is if you do want to get emergency supplies, buy it now. 
before inflation drives the prices of everything up even more than it already has. Because I got to tell you, the prices have gone up on basically everything. But I, I, I don't know if the apocalypse is coming. I think the U.S. is in a state of decline. 80%, according to one poll, said that the, the country is in a state of decay. Just do what you think is right for yourselves. Uh, and, you know, if you go to Safe and Ready Meals, you're helping support uh, the work we do as well as taking care of yourself. Take a look at this story from the Daily Mail. Shoppers across the U.S. are confronting alarming shortages of basic foodstuffs as a variety of factors exacerbate supply chain issues from coast to coast. Severe winter storms have disrupted shipping in parts of the country over the past week, and surging cases of Omicron are driving millions of absences, absences from work, disrupting basic functions such as shipping, unloading, and stocking. So this could be temporary. I would lean towards overwhelmingly, I would say with 95% confidence, I think it's completely temporary. But I also want to add, they're apparently saying there's going to be another major winter storm sweeping across the U.S. So whether you get a food bucket or you go to the grocery store and get a can of beans and put it in your pantry, just be ready for inclement weather. That's an important point, especially considering how crazy everything's been. Everything, everything's been. The U.S., reached a new record for a number of Americans hospitalized with COVID with more than 146,000 people currently admitted with the virus. Ah, 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 with the virus or from the virus? Yeah, that's right. Come on, don't give me that stuff. From DC to Anchorage, shoppers are finding uncomfortable shortages as a result of as a result and demanding to know when supply chain issues will ease. The misery has been compounded by inflation. Consumer prices rose by 6.8% in November from the year before and now here we go, baby. Consumer prices rose by 7% in December over the previous year. You realize this is, this is compounding, right? That if they say it's rising 7% over last year, and then next year, they'll say it rose 7%. That's 7% from the increase. So it's getting bigger and it's getting worse. Whatever you're going to do, do it now. Have you been holding off on buying that new computer you really need for work? Don't wait, man, because the prices are going to go up. I've told you this story uh, several times that we were looking to get a tablet for, for, the, for the workspace, for the office. And so I was on Amazon and I was like, oh, here's a good tablet. And I put in the cart. I forgot to buy it. I forgot to click checkout for whatever reason. I got distracted. The next day I opened Amazon and it said some items in your cart have changed. And it said the price has changed and it went up like 150 bucks. And I was like, whoa, what happened? Should have bought it. Should have bought it because it's not like everything is just rapidly increasing like that. But eventually you're going to show up and you're going to be like, you know, I was going to go grocery shopping last week, but I'll go today. And then all of a sudden it's like 50 bucks more for the groceries. Man, I tell you, I remember what, before we moved out here to uh, the West Virginia area, we were in the Philly area. We would go shopping. And we're in an urban center and we'd fill up our cart for like 350 bucks. We moved out here. I went grocery shopping and the cart was a third to half full and it was like 600 bucks. No kidding. And I was like, something's wrong. Something's wrong. There's no way we spent that much money. And I asked the woman at the, at the counter, I was like, have you noticed like prices going up? She's like, it's getting crazy. And this was four months ago. I talked about this over the summer. Now we got this. Consumer prices up 7%. It just keeps going up. Why would it stop? Joe Biden is not doing anything to solve the problem. They're printing more money. They're trying, to, they're trying to end the filibuster so they can just ram through with only 50 votes and a tiebreaker to start printing more money. It's just going to get worse. So look, I'm gonna, I'll stress this point, man. I don't know what you should do. You know, I shout out safe and ready meals because I do think it's important that people have an emergency food thing. Maybe just like, you know, two things of food you can put in your closet and forget about because you never know. It might rain someday and then you can't get outside and you, you'll have some backup food and you'll appreciate it. Last 25 years, right? But I, I don't know. I, I can't speak for you. I don't know your circumstances. Maybe you got kids. Maybe you need more. Maybe you need less. I'll tell you, man, get away from cities. The last place you want to be when there's a food crisis or a gas crisis is a city, man. That's in New York. During, uh, it was uh, Hurricane Sandy, I think. And it was crazy to see the lines out of the gas stations for gas because the supply chain was disrupted. There were, there were cars lined up around the block. People were waiting hours to fill up their gas tanks. And then what do you do? You fill up your gas tank and you go park your car. You're like, you better not drive because I can't go through that again. And it was like this for weeks.
Outside of the bodegas, little little corner stores in New York, I saw two guys with two, uh, one guy like a baseball bat, other guy a two by four, and they were only letting people in one at a time. And I thought to myself, you know, back then, uh, this is crazy. You know, this is what it's like in a city when things start to break down. Then when the bombs got planted in New York, then with all the crazy political violence, I was, I, I just thought to myself, you know, I got to get away from this city. I moved to the Jersey side, then I moved slightly south, then I moved to South Jersey, and now we're here. Why? You know what, man? The other day we had the CEO of Rumble on Timcast IRL, and he was telling me that he's like, you're ahead of the market, man. Like the thing you're doing, the audience interaction with the live show and everything is, is it's the future. And I'm like, I don't know about that. I've been doing that for a decade. And he's like, yeah, you're really ahead of the market. Let me tell you this. I saw what was going on in New York a few years ago and said, I don't want to sit around and find out. I thought things were going to escalate and things were going to get bad. Politics, everything is breaking down. And you know what? I was right. I certainly didn't predict a pandemic or anything like that. I just saw how things were kind of breaking down. Someone planted bombs in Manhattan. It's not an exaggeration. Look it up. It was several years ago. I think it was on like 25th Street. And when that happened, I was just like, yo, it's getting crazy here. And plus, I'd already experienced, you know, the, the, the insanity. I have been in cities uh, during civil unrest. And I said, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave. Now think about what's going on in New York. Certainly, I didn't predict a pandemic, but the vaccine mandates, I am sure glad that I left when I did. Maybe a little too early. Maybe the reality is I am just ahead of the curve. I have no idea. But I take a look at all this stuff and maybe it's this. My willingness to just take those precautions. It's that simple. You know, I bought a, a, a bunch of emergency food. I've been, I pay attention to the news all day, every day. Maybe it's not that I'm ahead of anybody. It's just that I'm reading what's going on and a lot of people aren't. I don't blame the average person for not being able to read the news all day, every day. I get it. People have jobs. My job just happens to be reading the news all day, every day. And then I see this stuff and I think to myself, it'd be pretty smart to have an emergency plan. So right now, even even this, this is uh, an important thing. We started building our new facility in West Virginia because our current production is, is done on the Mar just on the Maryland border. And it's very likely that Maryland is going to Im implement crazy mandates. We've Right next to us is Frederick County, and they've already implemented a hard mask mandate again. Like it's completely absurd. It's entirely possible they'll implement a vaccine mandate. I think they will. Maryland is a blue state. So I live in West Virginia. But we do production here. And I said, OK, well, we got to relocate our uh, main headquarters to West Virginia. And there's still no guarantee West Virginia is going to be a safe place. But it seems that, you know, I'll put it this way. There's probably a lot of things that I've been overly precautious about that never mattered, right? Because you don't count the losses. So if I said, hey, I'm going to buy a, you know, I'm going to buy X item from the grocery store because I might need it. And then I end up not needing it. No one talks about that. No one ever says, haha, you bought that, you know, frozen beef and then never needed it. Well, I guess in the instance of food, you just eat it. But when it comes to the big important stuff, I think we at Timcast and the work and what I've done has been very beneficial. If we were still based out of New York or the New York area, you know, if I never decided to leave and said, we'll just see how it goes. We'd be stuck. We'd, we'd have entrenched ourselves in our business in an area where we have vax mandates, and I don't know what we'd do. And then if we stayed in the Philly area, Philadelphia has vaccine mandates. We were in the suburbs in the Jersey side. And I thought to myself, I'm going to get out of here before it gets worse. And we were right. We wouldn't even be able to cross the river right now because the vaccine mandates. That's insane. So here, here I am looking at inflation is getting worse. And I'll tell you what, man. Um, I'll tell you what I've done. Cryptocurrency, gold and silver, not a crazy amount, but you know, I, I absolutely, um, gold and silver, trying to get out of the US dollar. Electronics are big because we import so much of it because of the chips. So I'm just thinking the last thing you want to do is be sitting on US dollars as we're watching this. There was an article where they said the smartest thing you can do, take a cue from Venezuela or whatever. It was like, spend them, or no, it was Argentina, spend the money as soon as you get it. Jeez, that's scary. No savings. Okay. Well, I don't know what you should do. I'm not going to tell you what you should do. Maybe you want some emergency, emergency food. Maybe you don't. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm personally going to spend the money as soon as I get it. So, you know, when we get, what I, what I try to do is, obviously we can't do that for everything, the business, we can't just spend money. But uh, what I try to do is 
buy things that we need as soon as we can. So if we're looking at expanding shows and we need microphones, computers, and all that stuff, I'm like, buy them now, worry about it later. Because the price of those machines is going to be skyrocketing. Look at this. 7%. It's the highest since the 80s. And the 80s, I'm pretty sure, didn't we have like an inflation crisis and like a gas shortage and other crazy stuff? It may be that things get better. It may be that this is the worst of it. The pandemic is, is on the way out with Omicron and all that stuff. Okay, for sure. I don't know. I can't tell you what to do. And I, I, I don't want to be in charge of anybody. I don't even want to be a leader for anybody. I, I don't want to be like, here's what you know you need to do and here's what I want you to do. I don't know, man. I want you to be personally responsible and well-informed so you can make a decision. And then when something bad happens, I can be like, hey, man, that's on you. Not me. Don't look at me. I didn't give you advice. I just tell you what I do. Maybe it works. Maybe you decide to follow that advice. But I, I, I just, watching what's been going on over the past few years, I'm hoping that everything calms down. But as you've heard me say before, why would it? Why would it calm down now? And a serious question. With the, the escalation of street violence, the hatred among the political factions, I highlighted this in a, a, on a segment on my main channel, youtube.com slash Timcast, that the, the uh, independent voters are aligning themselves in greater numbers over the past few years. The Democratic Party is shrinking, the Republican Party is growing, but ultimately, independent voters are shrinking. People are aligning themselves between left or right, and they're getting angrier and angrier. I mean, we got, we got hit with a DDoS attack, knocking out our show. We got swatted. And what do we do? They call us conservative or whatever, and it's like, we're barely, barely that, so we're like centrists. But they come after us anyway. So when I see that stuff, when I experience that stuff, I'm sorry. Maybe I'm biased because I'm in the thick of things. But it sounds to me like if I was going, if I was going to flip a coin, you know, actually, that's a better. If I was going to place chips on the roulette table, and you've got you know red and black, and red as things calm down, and black as things get worse, I'm going to be betting on things getting worse. I know maybe it's pessimistic. I don't think so. I think it's realistic. It worse doesn't mean. Let me rephrase that escalate. Things are going to escalate because I don't necessarily think it's worse. As the, these systems break down, you know, freedom emerges, the risk to your safety in, uh, uh, increases, uh, but you get, you move out to the middle of nowhere, you get more freedom. So we've benefited in, in certain ways that we're becoming more independent. We're having our own space. We're being, we're, we're satisfied with our chicken coop and our, our local farms and the fresh meat we can get. And I think life's never been better. Some people have it, have it really, really hard. But maybe the issue is if you're in a city experiencing food shortages and mass inflation, the issue is you need to get away from those cities. Because I got to tell you, out here, we got farm fresh meat. You, you, seriously, I can ride my bike about a half an hour or I just take the car a few minutes and there's a farm and they sell farm fresh tenderloins. Mm, so good. Fresh milk, eggs, getting out of these cities in this awful uh, supply chain trash, getting away from people. To a great to a great degree, but not completely, has been has been great, and we have more space. The dogs can run around. I'm like, man, it is better out here. Now I get a lot of people on the on the right being like, don't tell the city people to come to the countryside or whatever, and it's like, eh, well, you know that I understand, but I'll, I'll just say, there are going to be people who sit back and ignore this. You know, I think about uh, Nazi Germany, and I'm not trying to compare anything happening to the Nazi Germany. You know, I just think about there were many uh, many people who very early on said things are getting bad in this country and it's time to leave. And they did. And there were many people who said, well, it can't happen here. It won't get that bad. And they stayed. Certainly the people who stayed came to regret it. That's scary, right? Now, I don't know if anything like that's going to happen in the U.S. China's got their quarantine camps. Australia's got their internment camps. And a lot of people probably thought Australia wasn't gonna get that, would, would never get to that point. Now the police come to your house and they arrest you without charge or trial and bring you to a camp. No, no fooling. Now, they're going to come out and say, oh, it's not that bad. It's not like it's a, you know, you're being beaten. And, and I don't care how bad you think the camp is. They're taking people from their homes to camps. Spare me whatever, whatever justification you want to have for that. For me, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get away from cities before anything like that happens here. And I'm going to buy a bunch of guns and emergency food. And you know what? Let the people mock it. Let the left and the city people mock the idea. I don't care what cult members think about me. And to be honest, I don't care what most people think about me. You know what I care about? That when the snowstorm hits, 
and the roads are shut down, I've got food to eat. That when we get 30 to 50, 30 to 50 feral hogs raiding our property, I've got a weapon to protect myself, my friends, and my family. Now, we don't really have a feral hog problem out here. But, uh, you know, when those deer are ravenous and they're coming right for you, the deer are everywhere. Actually, the deer are like, like everywhere. I look out my window every day and there's some deer doing some deer business. And we got turkeys too. And you never know if you're outside and those turkeys, they come right for I'm kidding. I'm not really worried about that, but we do have bears. So I don't know, you know, the best thing to do, I'm told, is just get in the house and, you know, protect yourself. But we had, we were swatted, you know. We've got people coming after us. I don't care what people in the cult think. They try to, sh they, they, they make fun of me like, oh, Tim is selling emergency food. I'm like, yes, I am. Yeah. And then when the supply chain gets disrupted and you're eating stale bread, you're going to be like, I wish I bought some to the people in the city. You know, if, if you're out in the country, I mean, you still got uh, local farms and, and production and we've got chickens. We get a ton of eggs all day, every day, just endless eggs. Even in winter, I was surprised about that. I didn't think these chickens are going to be laying eggs in winter, but I'll tell you this. I don't care what people think. I really don't. If I did, I'd probably change my appearance, get my teeth fixed, take the beanie off, uh, and start pandering to the left or whatever. I don't care, man. There have been instances where people on the right come at me, people on the left come at me. I'm just going to do my thing. And in the end, I'm content laying in the grass, looking up at the sky, and just knowing that we've all got full bellies, uh, uh, water to drink, arms to protect ourselves, and that we're going we're gonna to get by. We're going to make it through all of this. No matter how bad it gets, I think we'll be okay. But if you're somebody who lives in a concrete cubicle in a city smelling of sour milk, and you're just like, I'm going to sit back and the government's got my back, good luck. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.